This is the BGG Climbers for the week ending 3-10-2021. This list is put together every week by Michael Alexander. And uh, I'll have links in the description if you want to uh, subscribe to the Geek List or take a look at the list for yourself. Again, if you like this video, please like and please subscribe. I do one of these every week, so let's get to it. So, one interesting thing here in the bottom of the list, the sub top 10, by accounts, the West Kingdom showed up again. It slowed down considerably from before. Probably most of the pre orders and Kickstarters got delivered and played. I do think we'll see this in the top 100 at some point. It just may take a little longer to get there. And we've also been watching Micro Macro from last week. I mean, I don't. I don't think this one will hit the top 100 just because of the type of game it is, but I do think it's unique and it is doing pretty well. It's got a pretty good reception and I haven't played it yet, but I am looking forward to playing it with my family at some point. And oh yeah, Eclipse Second Dawn of the Galaxy. So this one is probably less than a month from hitting the top 100, assuming it continues at the current rate. I do think this has got potential for a top 10 game at this point, depending upon how many ratings come out and how many copies are able to be produced before. You know, <clears throat> games may lose their interest after some period of time. I think we saw it with Seventh Continent after the big initial release. It kind of slowed down and has, I think it's reached its peak rating. But Eclipse, I think, has some legs. It has a big following and. I think when they get their second printing to the United States, or ho hopefully with a distributor, we'll see this pick up again. And one last one is Dude Imperium. So this one is probably, we're probably a little bit over a month from seeing this in the top 100. This is getting more copies out there than Eclipse, so it has potential to climb faster, but its average weight rating is a little bit lower. So, uh, But again, Dude Imperium is destined for the top 100 as well. So let's get into the top 10, which is the Lost Runes of Arnax. We've looked at this game a number of times. It is a deck builder worker placement combination like Dune Imperium with maybe a little bit less uh, Dune or excitement behind it. And I think it's a solid game. I don't think it's uh, from the reviews. I don't think it's quite as good of a game as Dune Imperium, but. I do think this one will eventually hit the top 100. It's got a really good production quality, and people really like it. So that is number 10, Lost Runes of Arnak. Number 9, which is Everdell. I think this is on the list because of the Kickstarter. So I think there's a Kickstarter going on for another expansion. So if you don't know about Everdell, this is a game with some amazing artwork on the cards. It's got this really cool tree. If you get a deluxe version, it's got some some really nice uh wow that's that's really cool it's got some really nice uh, things that go with the deluxe version i think one thing i think it's a good game i don't i think that the theme and the artwork bring a lot of people in and maybe give it a little bit better rating than i than i would just on a mechanics basis uh things can get a little bit crazy at the end with you know your huge tableau out here and i think that um, I think the take that elements in here could have just been removed and probably made for a better game overall. I I can't deny though that it looks amazing, especially the deluxe. The uh, collector's edition looks phenomenal. Some pictures there. I like the way the map is, and and clearly it's a game that is a solid game that's coupled with a really strong production value that has given it uh such a such a big following. So that is Everdell. Obviously, it's in the top 100. I don't. First, I mean, it's already got 20,000 ratings. This one's very unlikely to hit the top 10. But in, you know, with the new expansions, it may give it another oomph, may propel it into the top, you know, 30 or maybe even 20 if it gets a lot of ratings. So that's Everdell, number nine. Number eight, Sleeping Gods. So this is Ryan Lockett's latest game. This is getting tremendous reviews from everyone exceedingly high reviews from all sorts of people and uh i'm i'm looking forward to playing it i think that it's a it sounds like it's a good game for young for young families based on 
Tom Vassell's review, a decent game for him. And maybe my eldest could play it with us. And my son might be able to enjoy uh you know, making some some decisions in the game, even though he can't can't quite read yet. So and it's from Ryan Lockett. I think his ability to design games coupled with artwork and uh coupled with doing his own artwork is his really unique skill. And I think that he's been improving his abilities as a game designer throughout the years. So that's number eight, Sleeping Gods. Number seven, Sha Shazen. So I think I remember seeing this when it came out on Kickstarter. Yes. <clears throat> I thought uh I thought about getting it, but since it was primarily a negotiation game, I wasn't sure how much it would get to the table. I think in terms of negotiation games, my favorite that I've played is Sidero Confluence. I think that because everyone has something to win in the negotiation, it's a really interesting game because you know some of that's not really valuable to you can be very valuable to someone else at the time, and how you deal with that is is interesting. I do think this production looks really good though. I don't know how the game plays. I do remember seeing it on Kickstarter. It looks like they got a lot of people to play it though in some cafe. It looks like before the pandemic, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> before the pandemic. They were at some convention. Let's see which one this is. Gen Con. Kinda wish they would have went to uh back south because I would have been able to play it or maybe BGG Con. So that's Shazen. <laughs> Again, I think this is like a a political sim simulation where you're and how many players three to five best at four so that makes a lot of sense so we'll have to see i mean it looks like the kickstarter must be starting to get delivered but it got a big jump in ratings it's hard to predict right now where it's going to land the new ratings aren't that strong but you know we've seen with other games it can go up and down so let's keep this one on the radar. It does look very interesting, though. I do wonder if a retail version is going to come out, because that can make a big difference. So that's Shazen, I think. Number seven. Number six, Maglev Metro. So this is by Te Ted Alsbach, whose probably most famous game is The Castles of Mad Ludwig. And what is this one about? So this is, you're building a Maglev Metro. It's a in-game bonuses, round building, pick up and deliver tile placement game. Yeah, of course. Efficiency is key to success in this pick up and deliver tile laying game. You know, pick up and deliver is not the most or not many people's favorite mechanism by any means. It does look like some amazing some pretty nice production quality. These things look really cool, these Megalov uh Brains. And it looks like you're building a kind of a subway system almost. Uh, the production value of this game is like exceedingly good, it looks like. I mean, you got the gold painted little guys that fit in there, and they fit in the little maglevs, and you bust them around on the, or you take them on the subway, or, or in this case, maglev across the city. Looks really cool. I don't know how the gameplay is going to be, though. Just because. Pick up and deliver games tend to, you know, not be my favorite either. And it's kind of pricey. Geek Game Shop, 70 bucks retail. So let's see your two or four players best. I don't know. I didn't, didn't even see this one. It is getting kind of weak ratings, so I have a feeling we're not going to be seeing this much, even though it is from a acclaimed designer, Ted Alsbach. So that is Maglev Metro. Number six. Number five is Cubitos. So this game looked really cool. The rating is dropping a little bit, so you can see the average is coming down, down a little bit, but it's still doing well. I think we'll see it. Uh, I think just the fact that it's done by John D. Clare, a lot of people are going to pick this up because he's really exceeded in some designs. I think my favorite of his is Space Base and a lot of people's. So I think a lot of people are going to try this out. I think the game looks really good. I think it has some interesting ideas in it. 
As far as where it's going to land, I mean, it's definitely going to be in the top 1,000. I think we'll have to see if it picks up some speed as see if enough people are buying it and rating it to see if it's going to do better than that, though. So that is Cubitos. Dominant Species Marine. Oh, yeah. I think the designer of this must have passed away or... Let's see, it's Chad. Yeah, Chad Jensen, I believe he may have passed away, which is unfortunate because I still I honestly, honestly still haven't played Dominant Species, but the second version of it looked a little bit more accessible in terms of price at you know $54.99. And also it looked like a little bit better production. I mean, I did kind of like the way it looked when Dominant Species came out, but I just haven't had a chance to get it to the table because of the, uh, I would say, high learning curve and unforgiving nature of the game. So this is a two to four player game where Diamond Species is two to six. So that is a little bit different. Let's see what the images look like. Yeah, so, and also don't quote me on that if Chad passed away. I believe that was the case, but I, I don't know for sure. I don't I don't remember if that was uh, the case, although uh, Michael Alexander seems to indicate that was what happened. Looks like it's got similar mechanisms, maybe tuned a little bit for marine life. I think it looks good. I like the colors on this. I think the colors look really good. It's kind of a marine vibe even though it kept with the similar style pieces. So we'll have to see how this one does. I think a lot of people are going to pick it up just because it's dominant species, and that tends to lead to better ratings. So we'll see in time how this one does, if it'll uh, climb, the, climb the charts or fade away. Number four, dominant species marine. Number three, Solomon Kane. So this one is interesting. This was a Kickstarter from a long time ago. And it must have been two years ago at least. And I thought it had a unique premise. It was a the Kickstarter did exceedingly well. It had some really nice miniatures. Um it was unique because in this game, if I remember right, you'd never controlled Solomon Kane. You would manipulate his actions by i think manipulating these statues on the board and i think each person played a statue that you would manipulate and use your ability and stuff so solomon kane was kind of the actor and he had some pre-programmed ai or uh you know however he would behave and the game was you know a big miniatures game let's see if we can find some pictures of the miniatures that's one this thing looks really cool. It looks like a ghost or something. Got some uh, monk or hermit or something. So these these look pretty decent. Let's see what we got here. That one looks cool. Another viewpoint. Like a pirate almost. Gangplank. Sam, I guess. I don't know. So, <clears throat> anyway, it looks like the first people are getting this game, I think. Yeah, it must be because it's on it's on the as soon as people get their copies, there's some that show up on the geek market for sale for people that may have missed it. And we're actually getting uh some sessions available. So what do I think about this game or where it's gonna land? It's hard to say off this many ratings. Clearly the people that got it first really like it. And that's actually a good thing that a Kickstarter was able to deliver probably what they said they were going to deliver in terms of gameplay. Um, but we'll have to see if enough people got it, enough people are going to rate it, and <clears throat> how it does in the coming weeks. So that's number three, Solomon Kane. Number two, Antelope, book one, Breaking to Prison. This is, oh, it's from huh, Friedman, Friedman uh, Freeze, I think, right? Yeah. Friedman Ben Deason. Yeah. So this is the same guy that did Power Grid. And is this a new game? I guess it's from 2020. 
maybe people are just starting to get their hands on it, or maybe it was on a review that I wasn't aware of. Um, so this is a adventure book deduction game. Interesting. So he was trying to get into the. I mean, he's a man of many different talents in terms of board game design. He does a lot of experimental stuff, like the five hundred four game. And let's see here. So this one looks kind of interesting. It looks kind of like a complicated escape room game. It's weight 2.17, so not that bad. The one thing I have found with these games is that, for my tastes, the app-driven games tend to be better. That's just my opinion. Like, Unlock, I feel like, has done a lot. I've really liked Unlock games, partially because of the app interactions and the stuff you can do with that, versus the exit games um but you know i haven't played them all and, and maybe there's some uh maybe this one is really good it is getting some decent decent ratings although it's pretty pretty low in terms of uh uh number of ratings so we'll have to see how this one does in the future so that's cantaloupe book one breaking a prison which makes me think there's other books in the future coming and number one red rising so i wonder if the uh, Stonemaier Games champions have gotten this game yet. So this is the latest game uh, designer by uh, Alexander Schmidt and Jimmy Stegmaier. So this is their uh, Stonemaier Games latest game. I think it's the only release of the year. I haven't played it yet. I do and actually I know this is based on a, a book series by Dystopian Society and it seemed to me, um, what game was this mall after? Oh yeah, it was, it rem reminded me of uh, Fantasy Realms, which is a game that Jamie Stegmaier really, really liked. And I am kind of interested to play it because I think the artwork looks really good. The typical Stonemaier Games production where the production is exceedingly well done and, you know, the attention to detail in the games is just, just phenomenal. I really. I wish that um, maybe that Stonemaier Games would have published Dune Imperium, although, as someone noted last week, Dune Imperium is getting a upgrade pack to Deluxify it, so that is a good good touch. And, yeah, I'm really interested to try this one out and see how it is, just in terms of the fact that I liked uh, I like Fantasy Realms. I am interested to see what the price is. I don't remember what it is. I guess $40, so... It's one of the cheaper Stonemaier games. I think the same as the, probably one of their cheapest games. Um, so it, I think a game like Fantasy Realms needs to be on the cheaper end of the scale and, and more accessible. And I think that, you know, it must be a popular uh, book or a popular universe. I haven't read it, but uh, perhaps other people have. And that may bring a lot of people into playing. A, a game and it is getting good ratings so it's starting off with you know solid ratings i guess solo play may not be as good looks like most people are in the eight or seven range which is not bad it's not exceedingly well but uh some sevens and some sixes so we'll have to see how that does in the future so that is end of the list this was the bgg climbers for the week ending 3 10 2021 if you like this video please like and please subscribe please take a look at our other videos thank you